you see, salvation is easy. It has been made easy because of love. Because of love. It begs the question then why, if it's so accessible, will so many, many people enter into hell and be rejected by Christ? If it's so simple, as I said, it is the love of God that has made it that simple. By grace, by grace, through faith. Now, if we look at faith, and I might be but when I look at the Old Testament. I'm very hard pressed to find the word faith. For all the faithfulness came from God. Faith fully refers to God. His faithfulness. It's all of God. And it's only in the book of Job. What a wonderful book. That the word faith is referred to. But the Lord was faithful to death. To death. And the New Testament. And the new covenant is flooded. It's just flooded. The righteous man shall live by faith. Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. And act like men. Stand in the faith. One Corinthians thirteen verse thirteen. But now faith, love, hope abide in these three. Abide, but the greatest of these is love. One of the most abused, abused scripture. That's not love. This is love. He is love. She is love. That is love. He is love. I am love. And we sing, I want to know what love is. We want to know what love is. I want you to show me. I thought I knew what love is. Until the Lord showed me what love is. Not. When we love others only because they are lovable according to our requirements. That is not love.
That's not the love that the Lord speaks of. A love that you can give. And take back. Is not love. You've heard me say this before. When love is missing, what replaces it? You might say nothing, or just take noort and schamma on na. As I said, you will not find a distinction, a middle ground between love and hate. For if we do not love, and the love that the Lord speaks about, that is inconceivable to the carnal and natural flesh man, inconceivable, you won't understand. We hate. Then we hate. No, I don't hate. It's because you don't understand what hate is. You've been trained by this world. You've become a Roman because you've believed what you believe because all you know is what Caesar taught you. And who do you think takes your eyes that, that, that hate for God's word away? Who do you think avoids, wants you not to read the word of God? Do you know why? The enemy don't want you. Because he knows if you read the word of God, God might make you hear him. Huh? You know what happens when a man hears the word of God? Do you know what happens? Do you know what comes when you hear the word of God? I'm not talking about reading. I'm not talking about intellect or how well you know your Bible. Do you know the one that wrote it? The enemy don't want you to hear him. He that you read him, his word, and he opens the ears of your heart. And you know what comes when you hear the word of God? Do you know? Faith. Faith. How much faith? How much do I need? I look at all these New Testament verses. Little faith, great faith. Little faith, great faith. Little faith, great faith. Little, come on. You need faith. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And you know, listen to this. You know what happens to faith in the Lord? That's why these people prayed to the Lord and said, Lord, increase faith. My what? Faith. Faith is not grace. Do you understand that? Is faith works now? Are you saying, I must work for it? No. Mm. How does faith come? It will come. The Lord promises it. It will come by what? You can't stand in the faith. You can't walk in the faith. If you don't have it, it is impossible. It is impossible. To say this, that the Lord has been faithful towards me to death. It is impossible to claim faith. I'm not talking great faith, any faith. 
those weak in the faith, those with little faith, those with great faith. It is impossible, says the Lord, to call upon him which we have not believed. How can you call upon me, says the Lord, when you don't believe me? Now, for you to believe or not to believe, there has to be something on the table. Is that not so? Now, we get to the word. As I said, there is a big difference. Between having all the intellectual, seminary, knowledge, Bible study, everything. Between reading about him and knowing about him. That few inches of the brain, if it doesn't get to the heart, it means nothing. Look at the scribes. Look at the the Pharisees. But we are also warned of the imbalance. With all the zeal for the Lord, but without any knowledge. And you cannot test the spirits. And you will serve the devil and not even know it in the name of Christ. Because, why? Faith. You see, without faith, it is impossible. And you know the rest. Why do we complicate it? If salvation is so easy as to what? Drinking a glass of water. Come to me, says the Lord, all that are thirsty. If it's as easy as opening a door. Behold, says the Lord, I'm open the door. Why then? Why then? That's not the problem. The problem is letting people know that they need a Savior. They don't care if you run around and say, Look, I've got a cure. I've got a cure. I've got a cure. Come here. There's a cure. They'll laugh at you. They spit at you. They scoff at you. Why? Because they don't know that they are sick. They do not know that they are eternal soul. The enemy has blinded them to death. That's why men don't want to think about death. That's negative. That is the most idiotic thing I've seen. Death is a reality. Eternity is a reality. And that's the thing, isn't it? And there are these people these people Listen to you, Dion. Let me rephrase that. There are some of us there are some of us that has just said this. Yes, thank you for the grace. Now leave me alone and I will see you there. You see? What do you mean? That's what they do. They go through the motions. But if you look at their lives, if you had to take a camera and record their thoughts, their lives, their wants and their desires you will not find the required faith. Again, you look at your New Testament, you read through it, you'll see 
that the faith that the Lord speaks about when he does all these miracles all over the New Testament. Great faith. Those weak in faith. Little faith. How we get it. And that's what the enemy avoids. He does not want you to touch faith. He does not want you to touch faith. He does not want you. He doesn't even want you to start reading that Bible. Even if it looks like foreign to you. Even if the words get all mixed up when you read it. You see. But I can promise you this. If you persevere in that. God will open the ears of your heart. Because this book. This book. This Bible of ours is a wild thing. God promises us that faith will come. By what? By hearing the word of God. And as the disciples and the apostles cried out to the Lord, what? Increase our faith. But you need to have some for it to be increased. Do you not? That's why the Lord says, to those that have will be given and those that don't will be taken away. How do I get faith? Not all of us have the same faith, man. What do you, yes, I know. But you need to have, you need to have something. Do you understand? That's why it's a cross. I wonder sometimes why the Lord said, you know what? Deny your flesh and your, your spirit. Your wants. Deny it. Fight it. Because you know you are convicted by the Holy Spirit. And even if you avoid the word. God has written it upon our hearts. And I, I sometimes wondered. Why, why does the Lord say to pick up our cross daily? Why, do, why don't we just hold it 24-7. You know, maybe it's because He is the God that nor sleeps and nor slumber. And maybe at night, when we lay down our heads in peace, He watches our cross for us. Because He nor sleeps and nor slumbers, but we do. And He wakes us up if it's His will. That we may what again, the new day, today, pick up the cross. There is so many things about daily, daily, daily. I hear people calling other men, Oh, you have such great faith. This and, and that. Listen. Hear what the Lord says here. In 1 Corinthians 2 verse 5. So that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men. Don't draw. You cannot get faith from the wisdom of men, my friend. And before you say, I know, I know. Think about, think about it carefully. Because I, I say sometimes, you know, I wonder, people, you know, you meditate on the word of God, but people walk around as Christians and meditate on the word of men. They become so lazy. They, they got these Bibles that, that's got so much commentary mixed up of all these men over history. I'm not saying it's wrong, but you have to tread carefully, my brother and sister, because there's more commentary than scripture. Okay? And we end up unknowingly Walking through this day, meditating on the word of men. Instead of doing what? Let the scripture interpret the scripture. And if that's not working for you, you have been given an interpreter. Have you not? Have we not? How will the Holy Spirit interpret it for us? The Bible says this. Now, obviously in prayer, we need to understand that, my friend. The power of prayer is not the one praying it, but the one who hears it. Amen, amen, amen. 
I'll amen myself. What do we do? Okay, I've, I've tried cross-referencing and, uh, 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 you know, oh, what do we do? The Holy Spirit of God bears witness to your spirit. And like I say, a witness will witness for you or against you. That, come on. Do what is right. Stop doing what is wrong. You're talking about perfection. Oh boy, oh boy, I'm not. Let me tell you this. If you think that anybody that carries the name of the Lord needs to walk in perfection, you are the hypocrite. You go ask any pastor's wife, any preacher that ever lived, go and speak to his wife. She will tell you about the imperfection of that man. But praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is a difference between the man who is striving in faith, striving to enter, striving, and the man who folds his hand and says, uh, we'll must see when we get there. If the qualification of carrying the Lord's name is perfection, then every man listening this morning, get off the pulpit. Is it not so? Including me? Yes, we carry a great responsibility when we put His name on our lips. We know that. But let me say this to you. I've been called many things, but I tell you, the, there's, there's one or two things that, that cuts me so deep. And I have to fight in prayer, in tears. Not because of what I'm called, but because I want to make sure I'm not. Because my fear, even though men and women hurt me, is not for them. It is that I'm guilty. That's my fear. That's my tears. That's my cry. And he rips me up. And he lifts me up. And I cry back to these people. I say this. I'd rather be the man beating my chest and say, Lord, save me, I'm a sinner. Not I've sinned, not about my sin, about what I am. About what I am. You see, that's the difference with Judas. That is the difference between Judas and Peter. That both had remorse. But there was a difference. One was restored upon salvation and one was sent to hell. Do we know the difference? It is a strive to enter. Paul did not say at the end, Ah, hippie, hippie, happy, happy, clappy love. Paul said, I what? I fought a good fight. No, 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 no. Let me tell you. When I, I want my arm to be tested every single day by God. And I, I hope I stand before Him. Blooded, dented, rusted arm. Rusted because of the condition. Dented because of the blows of man that comes from God's testing. To show us assurance that we are where? In the faith. And everything we dare say, He will test. 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 We are not talking about how great we are. 
Paul said, amongst you, I am the greatest sinner. Okay, let's put that on the table. Would you now hear God? Because somehow people think, if they make fools of the people carrying the Lord's name, they can gain salvation because, look, if, they, if he can do it, I can do it, he can do it. No, no, no. That is not an excuse. That is not an excuse. That is not an excuse. You have to engage. Lord has made a way. He has made a way. He has made a way. And the way starts. It's the start. You think your life is going to be peaceful when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ? You've been granted salvation and the faith required. You think you're going to have peace and joy, joy? Is that how you read the word? Go read it again. Go read it again. Go read it. Keep fighting. And God will make you hear and see. I want to say it is so important that we understand what love is not. What love is not. There is a fruit that people are portraying as it's like that Plastic fruit bowl on the table. It looks eatable. It looks succulent. It looks beautiful. But it's, it's empty. It's empty. Here's the thing about this love. That my Lord. This love of His. This love that we can have for each other. That supersedes everything of this world. Is a love we can have for one another if we hear what he says to us. For you shall love the Lord your God. That's number one. For you shall love the Lord your God because he was faithful to death. He his faithfulness is perfect and complete. He did not ask us to have perfect faith. He's given us everything. He's given us everything. And the Holy Spirit will bear witness. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit bears witness this morning. You know, when, when John's mother was pregnant with him and Mary with Jesus, you know what happens when these come together because we know that John was already filled with the Holy Spirit. Now listen to this. Jesus being called the Word. What happens when the Word of God and the Holy Spirit bears witness of the Word of God? It leapt for joy in the womb of the mother. We take, say test all spirits, but we don't know what we're speaking of. We don't know that we should test it against the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit who wrote the Word of God, written by men inspired by the Holy Spirit, which is God. And without faith, God says it's impossible. And you know what that means. Here's the thing. Many, 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 many people will think that they knew what love was. To only be shocked in their boots on that day. You can't come back. You want to know what love is? That Knowledge comes from God and that wisdom. 
I can tell you now, we do not know what love is. Many, many, many will not know. The devil knows also that as long as we have fake love and kindness, fake love without truth, kindness without the truth, just give it to them. And if it doesn't sound kind, don't preach it. It doesn't sound loving, okay, don't preach it. If it's negative, don't preach it. We only preach what appears positive. Then, my friend, you have very, very little to preach. And you have to entertain men to keep them there. And once you start doing that, you have to keep doing it. Let me witness something about the fellowship I have in the mornings, especially when my nine-year-old daughter is with me. I've seen it repeated, repeated, repeated. When she hears the word of God, nah, you know what we do then? Then we want to sing and praise the Lord. It's the other way around. It's the other way around. We hear Him, and then we want to worship Him. We don't need all these man-made things to get us stirred up. It is only the word of God. That mighty, mighty fire. That mighty hammer. When you hear it. When you hear it. I don't know this great love. I think if, if, if God grants me the wisdom to know all the love that he meant, it would. It would blow my head off. But as I'm being led by him on the way, and he's so merciful. Don't look at men. Don't look at me. You'll only be disappointed. Let me say this. As a, another brother in America also said, I know me. And I need a mighty Savior to wrestle me down to the ground every day. And save me. So I can pick up my cross. And follow him. Many will claim. They knew what love is. And what love is not. But there's two things that I can witness about this love. God said that this type of love endures all. This love goes beyond our emotions and our wants. To only love those who's lovable to us. God showing us that's not love. That's you. I want to say another thing. You know why people hate the word of God? They hate the word of God. They say they don't hate it. They do. They do. They just won't admit it again because they don't know what's love. And they do not know what's hate. They avoid the words of the book and they avoid these little weak men like me, junkyard dogs, that proclaims and professes his word. Why? Because the enemy has taken and killed the witness in their lives. 
not that the Holy, it's not what I'm saying, is avoided them calling in a witness. You see, men can only be found guilty by the witness of two according to the law. That's why Jesus said, and my father bears witness, so there was two, do you get it? And the, f and the enemy has avoided us. Calling in the witness and say, please, Father, bear witness on my belief and my faith. Father, please bear witness so that I might not stumble. Lord, please bear witness through your word that I may know that I have eternal life. I thank you, Lord, for eternal life. I thank you, Lord. Many of us will try and make our case on our own strength and avoid the witness of the Holy Spirit. All I know is this. All I can tell you is what the Lord Jesus said. There will be great deception. There will be many and there will be few. There is a narrow way and a broad way. There is a striving to enter. Agonai. I want to close off with this scripture. Turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13. But having the same spirit of faith. But having the same spirit of faith. According to what is written. I believed. Therefore I spoke. We also believe. And therefore, we also speak. For we walk by faith, and not by sight. Amen.